Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be starting a brand new chapter, and this chapter is going to be focusing on sequences and series. Now, sequences is something that we've already dealt some time with in advanced algebra. So uh, a lot of this video and even the next video dealing with geometric sequences will be review. But we are, we are going to be taking uh, each of these sections, though, uh, one step further than we did back in advanced algebra. Um, but again, in this video, we're going to be focusing on arithmetic sequences. To review what an arithmetic sequence is, well, that's what's right up above me here. An arithmetic sequence is basically where we have a constant difference. We're always either adding or subtracting the same amount each time to each of the consecutive integers. The way the book describes it here is it's a sequence where the difference between consecutive terms is the same. Now, we have two different types of formulas that we're going to be working with for an arithmetic sequence. The first is an explicit formula. The second is a recursive formula. And those can be seen here on my left. Now, let's talk about the difference between a recursive and an explicit formula first. An explicit formula, the purpose of an explicit formula is it gets us directly to our answer. So if I want to figure out what the 100th term is for a sequence, or the 50th term would be for a sequence, I would want to use the explicit formula because then I could just put 50 or put 100 or whatever term I'm looking for in for n and that would give me my value for that term in the sequence. Now, if I wanted to find the first five terms, or the first ten terms of a sequence, the explicit formula would be a little bit more time consuming, and the recursive formula would be more beneficial. Because what the recursive formula does, that tells us the first five terms, or the first ten terms in a sequence, because it gives us to us uh, what we call recursively. Now, how would we do that with the recursive and the explicit formula? Well, over here for the explicit formula, the pieces there that are in red are going to be replaced by numbers. The pieces over there that are in purple are always going to remain as part of your specific formula, or your specific equation. And same thing is true with our recursive formula. Now, the values for d and a sub 1, those are, a sub 1 is our, referring to our first term in the sequence. Our value for d is referring to our constant difference. Now, sometimes they're going to give us, to those, give us those two pieces uh, pretty straightforward. But other times, we'll see that they're not going to give us those values. And we're going to have to do a little bit more work to try to figure out what the first term is and what to figure out what our constant difference would be. So let's look at some examples now where we're going to have to use these two formulas. OK, in this example, it says, suppose you have $250 in, in a savings account now and can save $75 each week from a job. Well, there's a typo here. I should have had a write an explicit formula to represent this situation. Well, at first step, whether it's a, an explicit formula or whether it's the recursive formula we're looking for, we need to first determine, well, what's my first term in my sequence and what's my constant difference? Well, the fact that we're saving $75 each week, so that's what we're increasing our savings account by every week is by $75. That tells us what our constant difference is. So our constant difference here would be 75. And the fact that we're starting here with $250, that's what our first term in the sequence would be, would be 250. So our explicit formula for this would be written as a sub n equals our constant difference, which is 75, times n minus 1 plus our first term, which is 250. And by the way, one of the things that I forgot to point out at the beginning of that video was that this formula is different from what you'll see in your book. So you want to make sure that you write it down in this format. The way the book describes it is they have the a sub 1 out in front. Sometimes they'll even have it written like this, which I really don't like because then if d is a negative number, if d were like a negative 2, you would look at this as being minus 2 as opposed to times a negative 2, unless you wrote it like this, which, again, is just more complicated. So I would just say, make sure that you memorize it the way that I'm telling you, as opposed to the way the book does, because you'll see that this is a lot easier. But now we don't want to leave it like this. We want to distribute this 75 through. So when I do that, I get 75n minus 75 plus 250. This is how we would find a sub n. So now our last step is to combine like terms. And the reason why I have you rewrite the formula like I have here is for this purpose. Because now the negative 75 and 250 are right next to each other. So now negative 75 plus 250 is 175. So that would be your equation. 
So now if I wanted to find the 100th term, I would just put 100 in for n and simplify that to get the answer. Now if I wanted to find the ex uh, recursive formula for the sequence, we start out by describing the first term in the sequence. Well, again, the first term is 250. And then it's going to be a sub n minus 1. Now that n minus 1 is a subscript. It's not the same as n times or d times n minus 1 that we had up here. It's a subscript, just meaning that this represents the previous term. So we're taking the previous term, and we're adding 75 each time. I'll write it like this. And this last phrase here, here's what this tells us. This tells us that we're going to use this formula for the second term on. Okay, we already know the first term. The first term is 250. We don't need to use this formula for the first term. We need to use this formula for the second term, the third term, the fourth term, and so on. So the way to describe that is we just say that it's for integers where n is greater than or equal to 2. Now that example is 100% review from what you've done before with advanced algebra. Now what happens if we have a problem like this? It says suppose a is an arithmetic sequence with a sub 2 equals 14 and a sub 6 equals 4. In other words, the second term of the sequence is 14 and the sixth term of the sequence is 4. Well, I need to know two things to find my explicit formula. I need to know, well, what's my first term in my sequence and what's my constant difference? Well, I don't know the first term. I know the second term and I know the sixth term. But I don't have enough here where it seems like I don't have enough information because I don't know my first term and I don't, my, my, don't know my constant difference. Well, we're going to have to do a little bit more work here than just getting the answers and just plugging them into a formula. It's not always going to be that simple. Our first step here is to figure out, well, what's our constant difference? Well, this is an important fact to understand. The constant difference is the same as the rate of change because we're constantly increasing by the same amount or decreasing by the same amount, that's the same as our rate of change. Now think about it. What's the rate of change the same as? Hopefully in your head you're thinking that, well, it's the same as a slope. Well, how does that help us? Well, this is the, let's think about what they tell us here. The second term in the sequence is 14. In other words, when n is 2, my answer is 14, which would be the same as a coordinate where x is 2, my answer for y would be 14. My sixth term has a value of 4. So I can look at that as being a coordinate where x, or my n value is 6, my answer is going to be 4. So now I can use my slope to find the rate of change, which would be my constant difference. So I would take 4 minus 14 and divide that by 6 minus 2. Well, 4 minus 14 is negative 10. 6 minus 2 is 4, which is negative 2.5. So my value for d is negative 2.5. Well, now we have to figure out, well, what's our uh, first term? Now, you might be thinking, well, it's pretty easy because if I know the second term is 14, if I know I'm decreasing, if you think about a number line, and as we go through this sequence, we're decreasing by 2.5 each time. If I wanted to find the one before that, then I would just add 2.5 and, and get 16.5, which would be true. That would be true. That would be our first term is going to be 16.5. But they're not always going to give us the second term as the first or as the earliest term in our sequence. Sometimes they'll give us that the seventh term is a number and the twelfth term is a number. So we're not just going to have to go back one. Like for example, in a minute you're going to have to work on this one on your own. Where they give us the fifth term is 400 and the twelfth term is 827. So I'm not just going to have to go backwards one. I'd have to go backwards to figure out four times to figure out what the first term would be. So I'm going to show you a little method that we can use to figure out what the first term, regardless of the situation, and that's using our original formula. Because we know what our constant difference is, we know our constant difference is negative 2 and a half. And we know that when n is 2, our total is 14, so I can use that to my advantage too. I also could use 6 and 4 if I wanted to, but I'm going to use this one, because I know when I know my total is 14 when my term is my second term. So I'm going to put negative 2.5 in for d and the second term in for n. Well, 2 minus 1 is 1 times two, negative 2.5 two is negative 2.5. And, and if I add 2.5 to both sides, I get 16. So I know my first term would be 16. So now I have enough information 
to be able to use that formula and plug the information into that formula to get my explicit formula. So it would be a sub n equals negative 2.5 times n minus 1 plus our first term, which is, whoop, I said 16. It should be 16.5. So plus our first term, which is 16.5. And so now I'm going to simplify this by distributing the negative 2.5 through. That's well, kind of squeezed in there. But now we want to combine like terms, so 2 and a half plus 16 and a half is 19. So we have a sub n equals negative 2.5n plus 19 is our explicit formula. So I know that's a lot of work to get to our explicit formula, but most of that work was just trying to figure out what our first term is in constant differences. Because now, in order for me to find the recursive formula, I have everything I need. I know my first term, that's 16.5. And I know that to find the next term in the sequence, we would take the previous term and add my constant difference, which is negative 2 and a half. So I could write plus negative 2 and a half, or it would be better just to write minus 2.5. And we would do this for the second term on. So that would be our recursive formula. Okay, so again, let's just walk through those steps. The first step to figure out the constant difference is the same as your rate of change. So we're going to treat each of these uh, terms with their values as coordinates. And we can use those then to find the rate of change or your constant difference. Once you know your constant difference, we can use our equation here with one of those coordinates as your value for n and your total value. And use that to figure out what our first term is. Once you know the first term and your constant difference, we can easily find our explicit formula and our recursive formula. Well, I want you guys to have an opportunity now to try this on your own, so why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. When we're trying to find an explicit formula and recursive formula, when we know the fifth term is 400 and the twelfth term is 827. So why don't you guys go ahead and work on that, and like I said, pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the right answer. Okay, let's see how you did here. Again, you should have first found that, again, these are coordinates, so the fifth term equaling 400 would be the coordinate 5, 400, and the 12th term being 827 would be a coordinate 12 and 827. So we would find the rate of change or the slope between those two points, and you get your constant difference then is 61. So the next step would be to figure out, well, what's my first term in my sequence? So I'm going to set this up using that equation. So what I did is I put, I used the point 400, where x is 5, or n is 5, and your value would be 400. Put that in as your total. So then it would be your constant difference, which is 61 times your value for n, which would be the 5. It would be 5 minus 1 plus your first term. Now I can simplify that. 5 minus 1 is 4. 61 times 4 is 244. Subtract 244 from both sides, and I get my first term is 156. Now I know my constant difference in my first term, so now I can set up my explicit formula. So it'll be your constant difference is 61 times n minus 1. Again, we don't need these specific points anymore. We're done with those. Uh, so just be n minus 1 plus your first term, which is 156. My next step is to distribute. We want to distribute that 61 through. That gives you 61n minus 61 plus 156. Negative 61 plus 156 is 95. So you get your answer for your explicit formula. It would be 61n plus 95. And lastly, then, using the information that we know for your first term and your constant difference, we can get our recursive formula. So the first term would be 156. And then to find the next term, we would take the previous term and add 61. And we would use that for the second term on. So we say for integers where n is greater than or equal to 2. So that's it. That is how we find an explicit and recursive formula. Remember, it's not always going to be so easy as just giving, plugging some numbers into an equation. Sometimes we have to figure out what that constant difference in first term is before we can even get started. So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignment.